In the previous slides, I went over how the Lewis antigen structures are formed and should come to no surprise that the three key players responsible for their expression, both in secretions and on the red cells, are the Lewis, H, and secretor genes. So let's break down the Lewis A and Lewis B inheritance into simple terms. When we're talking about Lewis A, for example, being expressed over Lewis B, either the secretor gene, H gene, or both will be amorphs. Because Lewis A is like, I'm Mr. Independent. I don't need you, but if you want to come with me, then only one of you can come. So we're going to label this fool as a non-secretor. And what this means is that Lewis A will be the only antigen expressed in the secretion and on the red cell. Then we got Lewis B. And Lewis B is just the opposite of Lewis A because he's needy and not as selfish. He's like, listen, secretor H, I can't express myself without you here with me. So we're going to call those that are Lewis A negative, Lewis B positive, the secretors. And thus, they will be able to express Lewis A, Lewis B, and H in their secretions. And of course, Lewis B will be expressed on the red cell. If we look at the chart showing the possible phenotypes and their frequencies for the Lewis system, you can see that the most dominant phenotype among both the black and white races is Lewis B. And we know that those who express this antigen are the secretors. However, the non-secretors, those who possess Lewis A, are shown to be significantly less frequent in both races. And furthermore, those that display neither or both phenotypes are even more rare, especially among the white population. In terms of their clinical significance, the Lewis system actually lacks any clinical significance. And this is to say that if a unit of Lewis positive blood were to be transfused into a recipient who is Lewis negative, the donor's antigens would neutralize the antibodies and a reaction likely wouldn't occur. And it's always safe to perform a cross match, but transfusion reactions are rare. And since Lewis antibodies are of the IgM class, there's a low probability that hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn will occur because these antibodies can't cross the placenta. So there are a few methods that are used to detect the presence of Lewis A and or Lewis B antibodies. And one is test tube agglutination. When properly performed, you should see agglutination in not only the immediate spin phase, but in the 37 degrees Celsius and ASG phases. And normally for IgM antibodies, they react best at room temperature but the potentiator enzymes, in this case, enhance the reactivity, especially with anti-Lewis B. Another technique is neutralization. And the principle of this method is that by combining a commercially prepared substance with the patient's serum, the soluble antigen in the commercial product will inactive inactivate the antibodies in the patient's serum if they are in fact present. And that concludes my presentation on the Lewis blood group system. Thanks for watching.